Welcome to the plug. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We're about to jump into our new Change the Channel series. Make sure you're ready to take notes. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy. The name of this series is Sermon Today is going to be Two Truths and a Lie. And so I want you all to let me, I know like we're not supposed to lie in church, but like just follow with me for this little game, okay? Follow with me for this. It's for a good cause. So, but you don't lie even if it's for a good cause, all right? All right, just make sure. So tell me which one that you think is false and which one you think is is true, okay? You just have to figure out which one is the false statement. And these are just some like personal things in my life. So, I didn't play basketball in high school for the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. But, I played college basketball and my team got a championship ring uh, for being the SIAC champ. Or, I played varsity in the ninth grade. Which one is false? Which one's false? I didn't play high school basketball, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I did play college basketball and won a ring for it. Or, I played varsity basketball in the ninth grade. Which one is true? Number two. Number two? Number two. Number two is what? What is that one? That one's not true? I don't think that one's true. You don't think that's true? But if that one's wrong, then I think it's, it's between the ninth grade and the college. So I did play varsity basketball in the ninth grade. That is a true statement. I got buckets too, boy. Um, <laughs> just wanted to let you, I clarify that out there, that I got buckets. Um, my college basketball team did get a championship ring with the twist. <laughs> we were the SIAC champs, which means we had the best record, so we got a ring for the record, but we did not win the championship. Mm. I was right. Mm, kind of right, kind of wrong. You see, in the world, the media will portray things to us that are truth, but it's slight bits of truth, but it's not the entire story. It is true that I got, I should have worn my ring today because that bad boy fat too. It's fat, it's a nice ring, got my name in it, but we didn't win a championship. We were the SIC champs, but didn't win a championship. And a lot of times media will do the same thing to us. It's a perception, something perceived out there as true, but it may not be a true statement. My question is really this, what has media put into our minds? What seeds have they planted that are sprinkled with truth that has taken root and now it's starting to flourish, but the seed is actually a false seed? Because a little bit of truth actually equals a lie. Like, you know, Satan, really Satan, when he tricked Eve in the garden, he tricked her with something godly, if you think about it. He said, you want to be more like God. Like, that's a good thing, right? There's truth in that. We, we want to be like God, right? However, there was a little sprinkle of lie in there which caused complete deception. So we just have to watch out for the small deceptions within everything that we do. That make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So seeds produce after its own kind. So an apple seed produces what? Apples. Pears produce. Pears. Bananas produce. Bananas. Right, right, right. And so Genesis 1.11, it just says the same thing. It says, then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation seed-bearing plants and fruit trees, each bearing fruit with seed according to its own kind. So it's just saying whatever seed it is, is what it's going to produce. So deception breeds more. Mm, you a smart guy. You a smart guy. Lies breed more. Lies. And truth breeds more. Exactly. Point blank, period. And so we have to realize what are the seeds that you're planting in your life right now, that I'm planting in my life, am I planting seeds of truth, deception, or lies? Well, let's hope that you're not planting, like, deception or lies. As a pastor, I mean, as a pastor, you shouldn't be doing that. You got you to gotta leave. <laughs> and you're right, but in reality, like, 
I'm considered a minister, but all believers are ministers. All people pastor. You have to pastor your own life before you can pastor anybody else. So it's not like just because I'm a pastor, I'm supposed to be doing right now. Nah, just as ministers, as a believer, you got. I, I hope that you're not planting seeds of deception in your life, right? And so, um, but yeah, you're right. But we all intake certain things, but we have to take more of the truth in of anything else, and that washes out everything. So let's read Proverbs 4.20. 4.20. The media is full of deception, full of lies, full of things. Um, but let's read some truth. The Word of God is truth, um, and these are facts. And let's look at it like this. How do we know the Bible's true? Well, let's think of it from this standpoint. No other book is able to tell prophecy that happened thousands of years before it actually happened. You know, like it talked about Jesus being born in like the slums and the manger thousands of years before it actually happened. It talked about him dying on the cross before it actually happened. And so like these are prophecies and these are ways that we can prove the Bible is true based on its past record. Proverbs 4.20 says this. Read that for me. My son, give attention to my words. Pause. Incline. Give attention to my words. Come on. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are the life to those who find them and the help to all their flesh. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, I think... This scripture is really saying that we got to protect what's coming in our eyes, what we see, and what we hear. Point blank, period. And I think it's really funny, in this age of social distancing, where we're all supposed to be apart from each other, mask on, everything like that, we want to protect ourselves from the virus. However, we don't ever social distance from the media that we're putting inside of us. Some of us need to social distance the media that we're listening to. We need to stay six feet on, on some eight feet, ten feet, like stay back away from me. Because the scripture talks about this. It talks about it's not what goes in the man. Jesus was talking in, in to, the, uh, to the Pharisees and they didn't wash their hands. And they said it's not what goes in the man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. But what comes out is what you put in through your eyes and your ears. So you have to be aware of what you're in taking. Social, put a mask over your phone. Like, you want to put a mask on everything else, take a temperature check of what you're watching and see if you got that virus. Amen? Hey, woo! That's good right there. So we just have to be aware in this season that we social distance what we intake. Um, we have to be aware so that we don't get deceived because when you get your eyes off of the prize, you start to veer off course, Right? And so I think it was one time I went to this little, like, uh, went to listen to this preacher in Alabama. And we got home. It was like 1 o'clock when we were leaving the church, and we had to drive back. And the girl was tired, so I was like, I'll drive. Let me take the wheel. And so I'm, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, like, I start feeling a little tired while I'm driving. And so I'm, for some reason, I don't know what was going on in my mind, but I was like, let me just close my eyes for a little bit. <laughs> I, I know. I, <laughs> no, no, you can't. I know. Do that. I, it was like a subconscious thing. Like, I automatically started closing my eyes, right? Your mama's probably done that before. Like, she's probably. But the only reason that I knew I was off track. In the car, and I'm driving at that point. Like, we're not letting you drive. But if yeah, I'm off, <laughs> if I'm going, I started. The only reason I woke up because I started hearing that brrr, on the side of the road, that woke me up. And a lot of times we have to do the same thing. If we're going off course, there's things in our life that's going to get bumpy. Brrr, you always depressed. Brrr, you always anxious. Brrr, you always getting your phone taken away because your parents are putting you in time like punishment. Brrr, like you may not be living according to the word of God. And so I got my eyes off of the road and I started to veer off course. Really, I was attracted to the darkness because I was sleepy, and so when you close your eyeballs, they dark. And so, like, I was attracted to that darkness, and I started to go off course. And we got to realize, hopefully, we don't do the same thing in our life, but the beautiful thing, we can align ourselves. It's called an alignment. When you're going off course and the mechanics come and line your wheels up, like, we have to do the same thing in prayer and reading the Word. And the Word of God is an alignment for our life. It aligns us. So... The more that your senses, how many senses you got? Five or six. Like, 
Okay, I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> okay, we just say five. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go with five right now, right? And so how media started, just think about it back in the day. How did they do stuff? How did they get media? Pigeons. Pigeons? <laughs> they had newspapers. Yeah, like mail. Mail, newspaper, yeah, right? So that's how they would transfer stuff. So newspaper is what senses are you using? Uh, basically the, your sight, right? Your sight, right? So just your eyes were being taken care of. And then after your eyes, then they started to bring in the radio. And with the radio, you're hearing, right? And nowadays, what they do is this. News. It's, it's your eyes and your ears. So the more senses that are engaged, the more likely you think something is true. If you're seeing it and it looks real, you're hearing it and it sounds real, you're probably going to say, oh, that's probably real. And so today, everything we watch is iPads, phones, televisions, computers. And so we're engaging both of our senses, so we're more likely to be deceived, like point blank period. And it can be really confusing in this day and age. Like, what's really true? What's really false? Like, you got people talking about Bill Gates is about to put chips in everybody. But then Bill Gates is talking about, I ain't putting chips in everybody. Oh, everybody's going, like, or you have, like, the Democrats are right. No, the Republicans are right. No, the left is right. The right is right. Then you have, oh, no, 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 don't have sex before marriage. Oh, no, 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 it's okay if you have sex before marriage. Oh, no, 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 abortions ain't wrong. It's, it's all about women's rights. It's your body. No, no, abortions is wrong. And, and it's like so much going in our mind. It's like, what do we believe? Those are all good contras, aren't you? So, like... The world ain't ready for have to have them conversations right now. I mean, I'm just saying, but it can be confusing. Like, because whatever you look up, whatever side you want, you can look up and it's going to justify. If you believe that abortion is right, you can look things up and it's going to prove that abortion's right. Or if you think abortion's wrong, you can look it up and prove that abortion is wrong. So it's like, if both of them say that they're true, what's really true? How do we know it's true? It's a tough one. Ain't tell. Like, cause it's a if tough you one. Think about it. Like, most of the stuff that people want to say is because of what they've been through. So, like, mm. if somebody was up, like, was aborted and they were picked up as an orphan when they were, like, when they were a baby, they were like, I was a, like, I was supposed to be an abortion, but my parents just gave me up as a baby. So I'm all pro life, and I was like, that makes sense. But like, somebody's pro choice, like. That's fine. It's, it's their body. It's their kid. If they're not ready, they shouldn't have did it in the first place. But like, I mean, who like who are we to tell them that they can't do this and what's right and what's wrong? And so this is exactly what we're saying, right? Because it's like what's pretty much what you're saying is my truth. Whatever is true to me is it's true. I, yeah. And that is the world that we live in today. My truth is my truth, and we have to think about it like this, bro. If you're saying you're true, and it's on the left, and I'm saying I'm true, and it's on the right. Both of us can't be true. Somebody has to be wrong. Somebody has to be wrong. Like, it's like somebody's wrong. Now, according to how you view it, will determine what you think is right or wrong. And so, follow with me with this, right? It seems like there's no real definition of truth, or it's no real truth. But the Bible talks about this. In 2 Timothy, like, the Bible talks about this type of situation that we're in right now. So 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Listen to the scripture. This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. That just means that uh, dangerous times are going to come. You think it's dangerous times right now? Most definitely. Most definitely. For men, and a lot of times in the Bible when it says men or man, a lot of times it's speaking to like hue man beings, right? For men shall be lovers. Now, just tell me, does this sound like anything like today, okay? Okay. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, prideful, blasphemers, uh-oh, disobedient to parents, uh-oh, unthankful, unholy. Does that sound like anything today? Yeah, like it sounds like, whoa, this was written thousands of years ago, but why is this relevant today? Like, actually, it's probably more true today than it was back then. Yeah, yeah. But it was saying, like, this is what's going to happen in the future. And then it says, without natural affection, truth breakers, 
false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Like people are going to hate the ones that are actually doing good things, right? And so let's keep on going. That really do sound like today's society. It does. It says traitors, high, heady, high-minded, lovers, this is the one, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Ooh. That sounds like today, bro. <laughs> Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Now, this is the scripture that I wanted to get to. Ever learning, ever learning, always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Ooh. Always getting more information, but never able to get to truth. And so that is what we have to like realize and come to. In today is what we call the information age. Everybody's getting information, knowledge, 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 but not too many know the truth. And so here's some facts really quickly. YouTube facts. 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. 300 hours. So that's more information coming on every hour. So like you can never watch how much information is out there. You can never intake it. You all at this, at your age, you're like three times, you have three times more information than your grandma did. Three times more information you know. Three times more information. So, is there such thing as truth? Instagram, YouTube, family. Is there such thing as truth? Most definitely. Yeah? Like, there is? Yeah. I mean, you can't have a truth. You, I mean, like, you can't have a lie without a truth. Because you can't have something that's wrong and that's right. Because, like, there has to be something that's correct. Or, like, even if it's a slim chance of there's, like, truth, then there, like, at least it's there. And at least you know it's there. Because if it's there, then you already know, like, okay, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right. This mainly seems right. But let's see if we can get fully, like, completely right. So what we're looking for is 100% truth. That's what we want to go for. 100% truth. Not diluted, 100%. And so here are some things really quickly. Knowledge doesn't equal tr truth. Just we have knowledge, that doesn't equal truth. True statements doesn't equal truth. Just because there are truth statements in it, it doesn't mean that it's true. And then the last one, facts don't equal truth. And so we have to think about it like this. A statement that is true versus a true statement. Oh. They're two different things. And so even in, the media does this a lot, but this is why even in scripture, it says you have to rightly divide the word of truth. The word is truth, but if it's true, why do we have to rightly divide it? Because you can interpret things the wrong way. Now, let me give you an example. And I was talking with Monet and Candace about this earlier, and Kenan, right? Um, here's a statement. In the Bible, it says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Is that a true statement or is it false? That's true. It's true. Is it facts or is it truth? That's factual. It is facts. But it's not true. Thank you, Minister Savage. It is facts, but it is not true. Now, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Listen, listen. In the Bible, Job said out of his mouth, they recorded it correctly. Job said, um, dang, what was the scripture? Let me find the scripture. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In that story, did the Lord take away everything from Job? No. It was the devil. So it is a true statement. It is facts that Job said that, but it wasn't a true statement. The devil took it away, not God. And so we have to be aware in what we listen to, the music that you listen to, the stuff that you watch, how much is it is facts versus truth? And we have to be, it is facts that people sell drugs and make money. These are facts. 
But is that something, is that something truthful? Is that something up, upright? Is that something that you want to be putting in your spirit, man? Just because it's facts for them don't mean it needs to be truth for you. And it's like, well, I ain't about to do none of that. I know I ain't about to sell no drugs. But however, you're supporting people who are pushing that agenda, so maybe you do support it. Not you in general. I'm just talking to everybody, right? I'm, I'm talking to you because you right here, right? And so you, you get in everything right now. It's hurting my brain. So it's like my truth. Almost these are some statements that said, what you believe is true for you and what I believe is true for me. That's that new age stuff, Monet. It is true. That's that gym. Truth is subjective. Truth is in the eye of the beholder. Different strokes for different folks. You have your beliefs and I have mine beliefs. That's the end of it. <laughs> like point blank period. And that is not true. Perception is not reality, but perception can become someone's reality. Like this. How you see something isn't quite, doesn't mean it's true, but it can become true for you. Have you ever, like, heard something about somebody like, mm, should I use that? Yeah, that's fine. I'll use this example. Gossip. Let's use gossip. That's good. Good. We'll go with that. Have you ever heard gossip of somebody like, she's a thought? Yes, most definitely. So, <laughs> as, a, as a high school, as a freshman in high school, you heard that, definitely. huh? So you would hear that this young lady is a thought. Now, now your perception of her is a thought. So now when you see her, a lot of times you may see her talking to a guy. You may see her talking to a guy, and you may be thinking, oh, she a thought. She over here doing something with him. And she may bend over to pick something up. And you may see her doing that, and it's like, look at her being thirsty again. Just trying to show her his, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, in reality, that may not even be what's really happening right there. She could not even, she may not even be a thought. But because that was said and now you see it that way, that's what it really is. I do that all the time. I hear that somebody's, I mean, it's, it's natural for us to do that, right? And this is a deep one. And I know I'm a, y'all ain't going to like this, but it's still fact right? Oh, should I say that? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, this one ain't even like a hard hitting one like that, but it's just controversial, right? In, in many ways. So just because, oh, okay, what? I don't care. Like, <laughs> when do I, I never care, right? But, but it's not even nothing crazy, but just because somebody has a Confederate flag doesn't mean they're a racist. Right now, check this out. Like you, like, bruh, wait, wait, wait. Woo. So our perception. I <laughs> mean. Now I'm not a. I'm not a. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. And I'm using this because it's controversial. I'm not by no means like burn the Confederate flags. Y'all are loot. Y'all lost. <laughs> like why are you representing that? But somebody can have that flag up but that don't mean that they hate your skin color. It can mean that, hey, I, I mean, for, I love, you know, I love how it looks, the South, all of that type of good stuff, but it doesn't mean that they hate black people, right? It's the same thing. I know it's controversial. I know, I know, I know. But I want us to get into a mindset. I don't want you to think like me. Oh, no. I but I want I, you to start to think like me. Huh? I don't... I don't want you to think like me, I but I that. want you to think like, like me. Huh? I'll just let that simmer. Like, like I want you to start thinking like how oh, I think. Oh, oh, but I don't want you to think how I think. I get it. I get it. I'm just a little slow. No, no, no. You're smart. It, it that was just a little deep. That was, that was, it just took a minute. <laughs> So check this out. We got to keep moving, man. The time is running. It go. says this. Matthew 6, 22 says, the eye, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Perception and how you see things is like a lens over your eyes. 
like and it's like darkness. And so it's, the scripture says, if you don't see things through the light that I have given you through Christ, how deep is the darkness of the deception or perception that you see? It's almost like a filter, like a, a, a filter that you put over your Snapchat or something like that, right? You, right? That filter. It's like if you always saw through that filter, and you, you know the filter that makes everybody just look good. Like, it makes everybody just look everybody, good. Like, it makes everybody And if you look living good. through that filter, you're going to see everything as good, and that is not truth. There's some real, I'm not talking about people, but there's some real ugly stuff that's out there in the world, right? There's some real ugly people internally and externally, but internally, there's some real <laughs> ugly... <laughs> There's some real ugly looking things and you can see through a filter like, ain't nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. And so what we have to see through the filter that God sees through and the only way to get that filter is to spend time with truth. And who is, Jesus says this, Jesus says, I am three things. What are the three things Jesus said? The way, the, the, truth. the truth, and the light. And so if you get those things, if Man, wow. If you spend time with the way, you're going to go the right way. If you spend time with the truth, you're going to know truth. And if you spend time with the light, that means you're going to be able to see the light. (laughs) You're going to be able to see the light, my brother. You're going to be able to see clearly. Let's keep on moving. Let's keep on moving. Society and media today does not really care about truth, but they care about the image that is presented. And if the image presented looks like truth, they can get you. It's almost like a turkey. Thanksgiving Day turkey. Like this turkey right here. A lot of times, society and media, they serve this to you on this platter. And it's dressed up really nice. I mean, pomegranates on it, I mean, rosemary and, and uh, pineapples and, you know, I mean, it looks good. The yep. onions, yep. the seasoning, really, really good served up to you. However, we don't see that this turkey was getting injected with all type of chemicals, all type of antibiotics. This turkey was not even eating grass and bugs like it was suppo- supposed to. It was eating grains, but those grains were injected with pesticides. So that stuff is in, injected. And we see this beautiful turkey, but we don't, know what we're but we don't really see what's turkey. in the turkey, <laughs> right? We don't see what's inside the turkey. We don't see what it's ate and all the contents that come with it. But all we see is this beautiful thing on a platter, and it looks good. That's ready to be eaten. Ready to be eaten. Smells, who smells good? Immaculate. Immaculate. But however, it can actually be death. There could be poison, well, not even can be. Most likely, this this turkey got poison in it. Most likely. Because of what it's been eaten. Because of what it's been eaten. What are we eating (sighs) that we don't even realize? Now, think about it like this. I'm going to show you all some pictures, and I want you all to just follow with me. These are things that are presented to us today, and it doesn't look bad, but let's look at it. This one is, this is called family planning or Planned Parenthood. What's wrong with this? Nothing. You see a nice African-American family. Facts for family planning. No, I mean, nothing's wrong with wanting to plan to have a family, right? Like, there nothing's wrong with plan. Pa- yeah, no, no. Don't worry about wrong. the facts. Don't worry about the facts. Okay, then the Just the name, family planning. Y'all look into it too deep. I mean, plan parenthood, family planning, the same thing, right? Nothing just sounds bad on that, right? However, they present it with this way. However, this entire organization is all about killing babies. Huh? This organization, Family Planning or Planned Parenthood, is all about abortion. But it's wrapped up in a nice way. It's wrapped up. They don't tell you that Margaret Sanger, who started Planned Parenthood, is a racist who hates African Americans, who actually teamed up with Hitler, and Hitler admired her. They don't tell you any of that type of stuff. They just say, family, family planning. 
family planning. It doesn't sound bad. It's wrapped up nice. It sounds However, like behind a great it, idea. it sounds Within great, like... but it's presented great. However, there's lies and deception. Let's go to this next one. Black Lives Matter. This looks, man, this is an awesome portrait. It's a nice looking thing. However, and nothing's, the word black lives matter, nothing wrong with that. But of course we matter. I'm a whole black life. I know I matter. I know you matter. My mama matters. My grandma, all of us, we matter. Everybody in this room matters. Everybody in, in this room, any human being matters, right? But nothing wrong with the statement black lives matter. However, there is something wrong with what they stand for. When they stand for destroying the family, their movement actually isn't about black lives mattering. It's actually about the homosexual LGBT community. And they say this in their document. Oh, yeah. I remember you telling me this. Yes, they say it in their document that our goal is to destroy the nuclear family. Destroy it. They want to destroy the realization that you have a mom and a dad and they want to say, we want to destroy that. That's not right. Yeah, that's not going to fly with me. And that's not cool. They have another, now tell me, does this look bad? Does this, I mean, this next one, go to that next one for me real quick. Love is love, I mean, that's a great, I mean, it sounds it's good, it's presented, the colors are beautiful, I mean, everything is nice. It's presented in a way, love is love. But, however, but they don't. But it's what they stand for, that's not what they. But however, it's what's behind it that matters. And when it's opposite, the only way you can know truth if you know what God's word is saying. Because God's word, I mean, you can get so wrapped up with love is love. Yes, it is. But now they're starting to, they want to add a P to the end of it now. They want to add a P. I'm not going to show the video. That's going to be next week. But they want to add a P to the end of it. The L-G-B-T-Q-A-I-P. The plus, the minus, and the P. For pedophilia. Yeah. See? Yeah. No. They're I'm trying okay. to add that now, too. So, but if you go with this statement, love is love, and you say, <laughs> it doesn't matter what I love. I love little kids. What, what you care about that? Oh, no. And so oh. things oh. are presented a good way, but it just because it's wrapped up nice doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, but That's the can't. only thing that I want us to get to. You have to look deeply. Now, I want to go with this. Booker T quote. Check out this quote. Oh, yeah. A lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by the majority. Just because everybody says it's right doesn't mean it's right. I'm telling you, young folks, today, there's going to be a time that you will see in your lifetime where people that stand up for truth are going to get persecuted. If you believe what God says in his word, you are going to get persecuted. You're going to get talked about, laughed about. It's trending on Twitter right now. My wife told me on Twitter right now. It's trending. Cancel Christianity. They cancel and everything. Cancel Christianity. And in reality, if I'm honest with you, cancel it. Because we're not called to be Christians. We're called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. So you can cancel a Christian, but you can't cancel a disciple. You can't dis- cancel a follower of Jesus Christ. And so what we are, we're followers of Jesus. Point blank, period. There it is. And you can't cancel us. Roll time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing for today. John 18, 33 through 38. Let's see what Jesus has to say about truth. This is right before Jesus was about to get hung on the cross, before he got whipped. He got a, you know, he had a beard, beard ripped out, butt naked hanging on the cross. I mean, beaten. It It said that, he said that he, Jesus got beat then worse than any other human being in the world. So I'm sure when he was hanging on that cross that they couldn't even recognize that he was even human. Like, he probably didn't look like the same person. You ever seen somebody get a black eye, like, get beat up really bad? It's like, yo, who is that? Like, Jesus got beat way worse than that. And this is what it says. Then Pilate entered and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? Jesus was a G. 
Like, Pilate was like the big dog who could kill him. He was like, yo, did you hear that? Or did you coming up to these conclusions yourself? Pilate answers, am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered. Jesus ain't even answered his question. <laughs> Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you rightly, you say rightly that I am a king. Then Jesus says this, for this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth Here's my voice. Jesus says, I came onto the earth for one reason and one reason only, to bear witness, to be an eyewitness of truth. Hmm, what does that mean, Jesus? What it really means is this. Jesus says, I came to bear witness to humanity of this, me, Jesus in the flesh, is how human beings are supposed to be living and walking on the earth. I came to show you as a human being, this is the level that you're supposed to be at. And when sin entered into the world and it messed everything up, we no longer are able to live to the standard that Jesus wanted us to live. So we said, I came onto the earth to show you who you really are, what you can really do, and who you can be in Christ. However, you can't live that way if I don't die on this cross and take away your sins. You got to repent. Come to me, I can, I'll fix you up. I'm going to be the one to fix you up on the inside. And once I fix you up, then you can live like how you're supposed to live. Then he says, Pilate says that to him, what is truth? And this is a question that everybody's asking today. I ask it all the time. What is truth? I really don't know. I don't know what to believe out here. I Everything that's going on, I don't, coronavirus, it's a conspiracy. Coronavirus, not even real. They ain't got nobody in the hospitals in New York. No, the hospitals are flooded with people in New York. But there's over 3 million cases in, in America. No, there's no case. Bro, how do we know what to believe? We don't. Not of this world system. But what we do know what to believe is this. That's why I don't get caught up in the media and what everybody else is saying. I get caught up with what the Word has to say because that's truth and that's going to guide my life. If you live your life by the Word, bro, I'm telling you right now, you'll be able to get through anything in life that presents itself because it already gives you the answer to every problem that's going to come up. But if you don't know the playbook and you don't read that Word and spend time, then you won't be able to. I don't know what's true or what's false out here in the world, but what I do know is this. I know that Jesus is true. Amen. I know that he's the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And I know that he dwells on the inside of me. So if he dwells on the inside of me, that means I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Point blank, period. And that's the only thing I need to believe. And so that's the point that we have to get to. But there may be some people out here that you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have not, we want to give you an opportunity. Me and Moses, both of us, we want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus for yourself. To not just accept him as your Lord and Savior, but to actually start to live like him. And a lot of times we don't live right because we don't got the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That spirit of God, the power that dwells with that isn't in us. And so I want to give you all a couple of... Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on IG at theplug.ym and we'll see you next week.